Can you believe this? That a little bugger of mine banged up again. Fourth time this year he's been inside. I thought it were about time I got off my ass and went to sort him out myself. Well, someone bloody well has to. He's in a prison miles away from here, but I'm not bothered, no. I, need, I know what needs to be done. I just wish, oh God, I weren't heading, you know, over on a bus that is chaffing my backside. I mean, we must have found, oh, every blasted pothole. Will you just slow down, moron? Oh. Do you know, it's the first time, you know, my new home has let me leave. Well, I say let. I didn't really have much choice, you know, I just got up and left. I guess I can see where the old boy gets his sneakiness from. Although he isn't as good as me, he's been caught. <laughs> Actually, I got caught once, you know. Not at the time of the crime, mind, but about three months later. Right, old ninny I was. Brought it all on myself, really. If it wasn't for that one night, I wouldn't be here now. I met this guy at a New Year's Eve gathering. I was wearing my best frock and showing more leg than Daddy would be proud of. And if, you know, if I'm honest, I went out looking for it that night, you know. <laughs> anyway, the party were outside down at the old rice field. My coat is on an instant. Oh, he was lacking around with his boys, beer in his hand. He was so handsome. He came over as I danced. My nipples were rock hard, it was that cold. <laughs> I think that's probably the reason he asked me for a kiss. He got more than that, I can tell you. <laughs> in 10 minutes, he had my dress hitched up and we were round the back of the old barn. I mean, he wasn't you know, particularly romantic. There were other ladies spread around, you know, on the turf next to us, but it rocked my world. Everything was good for the next couple of months. Well, until the extra tire appeared around my goat. It were easy to hide the spoon from my aunt and uncle, but when the little walk grew, it were obvious. I were up the duffer and the shitter all at the same moment. I lived with my aunts because my mum died when I was 10. She caught pneumonia and my uncle refused to pay for a doctor. Said there's nothing a doctor could do. Do you know what? I've hated him ever since then. Oh God, how long does this bloody journey take? I want to be back before they realise I've gone away. They don't take too kindly to those who leave the home. I mean, it's a nice place and they look after me well, but I'd much rather be out in the real world, smelling real fresh air. Oh, my aunt and uncle were rich, so I suppose that's why I'm in a good home. I've never heard from them, not in all the years I've been gone. They weren't happy when they saw I were pregnant. Oh, couldn't be seen to have a little slopper for a niece, they said, not him being the Earl of Derby. <laughs> I were 18 at the time, just a pup. But they didn't care, frowned upon it was. A young girl pregnant, not married. They said they wanted the baby out and gone within nine months. I said, oh, don't worry, I can get it done before. Down Gulliver Street, this place were a small little room round the back of a shop. The little man, well, the man wasn't little actually, he was big, but he was really scary looking and the place was just as wretched. And he held a bloody twisted coat hanger thing in his hand and he shouted, next. I was the only one in the room until a screaming girl, younger than me she were, came out from round the back of a drawn curtain. There was blood all over the floor. I scarpered, he weren't going to be hanging around to see where he was going to shove that thing. Well, I guess I was going to be having this little bloody shit after all. Oh, oh, finally I'm here. Oh, 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 seems like that bus journey took ages. Now, I have no idea where to go. I've not been to a prison before. Hell, I've not stepped out of heaven in 16 years. Right, um, this looks uh, less. Right, let's look for the front. Must be round here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Um, I'm uh, here to see Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> this art guy hasn't even flinched when I told him I been his name. I mean, most people smile and ask, oh, named after someone special. Well, yeah, actually, was. After a few months of this little bastard stealing my food, my uncle got me a doctor. I mean, he weren't too happy to do it, but, you know, he couldn't have a nice die on him, could he? Oh, think of the scandal. Anyway, the doctor's name was Dr. Harves. Lovely man he was. Used to give me a little kiss on the forehead every time I saw him. Made me wish this was his baby. <laughs> he was too old for me, though. Old enough to be my father. Of course, he could have been my father. I mean, I have no bloody clue who, you know, who mine was, just like poor Benji, really, because for the life of me, I can't remember his daddy's name. Franklin rings a bell, but, I, you know, it's only ringing in my head. My uncle makes out that no man was involved in the making of my baby. Show's not even the richest are clever. Comes from tadpoles, dummy. 
I remember the last couple of weeks, like it was the back of my hand, ooh, do you know what? Down here was really hurting, like nobody's business. And it made me wonder what the blasted coat hanger would have felt like. I went into labour earlier than expected. Shit, it hurt. Dr. Harves was bloody late and I had my know it all amp for company. Keep your hands to your where I can keep them, love. Ooh. She was a wonder, that woman. Apparently, uh, he did, and I can sit, oh, sorry. I struggled during the birth of my only son. Felt like the bugger tore me to shreds. Apparently he did. I can see Dr. Hives now, looking downstairs with a surprised look on his face. Not what a new mother wants to be seeing, I can tell you. I found out Dr. Hives' name was Benjamin, so I called him after my son. Franklin after his father. I mean, at the time, I weren't bothered whether that was his father's name or not, but at least this way, he will feel like he did have one. I don't remember my son as a baby. You know, as a matter of fact, I've never even held him. You know, all I remember is darkness and a, and a you know, like a bright shining light. Oh, there he is, Benjamin. Benji. Benji. Oh, God, he can't bloody hear me. Look. What's he like? He's seen pictures of me, so he knows what I look like. Benjamin. Benji. Oh, why doesn't he look at me? I've always tried to be there for him. Why won't he let me help him now? He's never let me since I went away. The birth was too much for me. A white light seemed to guide me to a new home, one where I couldn't help my boy grow. And from the first moment, he was alone. Aunt and uncle already had a home lined up for him, but that didn't mean I wanted to leave him. You know, he's never forgiven me for letting him do it on his own. If only he could see me, he'd know I am here and I always will be. <sighs> I best get back. I've tried, and he ain't having none of it. I mean, you've got to know when you're not wanted. It's a long bus, long bus journey ride back up there, and although my ass is still sore, I'd rather it took another pound and then stay and see him in here like this, all alone and afraid. Well, goodbye, son. But I have to leave you once more, because my mother will be wondering where I've got to. <laughs>